everyone, welcome to church today. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, we're so excited you joined us today. Now, we have a lot in store for you, but first we wanna go over our four core values. You guys remember our core values? That's awesome. Now let's go through them. January, do you remember our first core value? Yeah, our first value is love God. Yeah, that's so awesome. Now, can you tell us why we love God? Well, of course I can. We love God because God is love and He first loved us. It's so great how much God loves us. Now, Dave, can you tell us what our second core value is? I sure can, January. Are you sure? I really can. Are you sure you're sure? I'm gonna tell them, you ready? Okay, you tell them. It's love people. Repeat after me, guys, on the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Love people. That's awesome. Now, January. You want to tell us why we love people? Well, of course I do. We love people because God loves all people. All people? Yeah. Like my brother? Yeah, and your sister. And my sister. And your brother? Yeah, and your sister. God loves all people. Oh. That's amazing. Now, do you remember our third core value? Ooh, ooh. Our third core value is probably one of my favorites. So our third core value is do your best. Yes, did you do your best when you said that? I, I definitely did. That's awesome, and I know why you did your best. Tell me why I did my best. Because when you do your best, you know that God does the rest. You are so right, yes. That's awesome. Now, you want to get into our fourth core value? So our fourth core value is, again, one of my favorites. It's have fun. Oh, I love to have fun. Do you like to have fun? Having fun is fun. You want to repeat after us on the count of three? Ready? One, two, three. Have, have fun. fun. Everybody loves to have some fun. Now, you want to know what happens when we have fun? And why do we have fun? Because God gives us joy. So much joy. Isn't that so awesome? Yes. So we get to show that joy by worshiping. So Ooh. let's get up on your feet. And guys, let's worship together. You ready? Let's do let's it. Let's do it. All right, everybody. Let's stand up and worship. Come on, let's sing. He's the chosen one. He's the champion. The winner for all time. With me to the end. Jesus is my friend. He's always by my side. Anything I face, he will be my strength. I'm his and he is mine. I'm forever free. Nothing's stopping me. Because he gave his life.
Let's raise that energy level. This is one of my favorite songs. It's called Joy. Now let's put those hands in. It's joy. When I sing your name, there's joy. I cannot get saying this joy. All of my days, you will be praised. All right, let's sing Jesus. Jesus, there is nothing like your presence. I will sing of all your goodness. Where all my fears fade to pray. Let's clap those hands.
so much for every child and parent that is watching this right now. Lord, I just pray that they all can feel your presence right now in the room with them. And Lord, I pray that you'll open our hearts to whatever message you have for us today. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Great job, you guys. Hey, everybody. It's time for the memory verse. I need everyone standing up on your feet. The first time, you'll watch me. The second time, you repeat after me. And the third time, we'll all say it together. If you got it, Say, let's go. The first time, you'll just watch me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This time, you'll repeat after me. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5.17 
Great job. Now we'll say it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Great job, guys. Keep working on that verse. We'll see you next time. That was such a great memory verse. Yeah, it was. Hey, don't forget to practice that memory verse with your parents at home. And that leads us to our main point. It's Jesus is with us. What do you mean he's, I don't, we're, he's with us? Yeah, he's with us all the time. Really? Well, just, just watch the video. We're going to find out so much more about how Jesus is with us. Check it out. There's a sun coming up in my soul, Lord, in my soul. Hello, my name's Jeremy. And I'm Jay. Welcome to the final episode of a series we're calling Jesus Is. Now, this series is super awesome because we learn about Jesus and his life on Earth. Psst, Jeremy. Psst. Hey, we're, we're live right now. Not right now. Not right now. You good? Yeah. yeah. Like I was saying, the Bible teaches us to hear Jesus' point of view, and we might have what he might have to. Hey, Jeremy. Here, hey, Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. We're doing this. What he might have to say about our everyday situations. Hey, J J Jeremy. Yeah. Okay. I, I need to talk to you. So today's main point is Jesus is with. You know hey, what? Jeremy. Just, you feel like you've got something to say. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Well, while you were talking. I remember the story I've been meaning to tell you. Yeah. And I promise you it won't take long, and we can get right back to the show as soon as I tell you, okay? Why not? Let me hear it. What happened? I'm not exactly sure where to start or how to give an example of it. Yeah. But I guess we should start from the beginning. Probably the best part. Yeah. yeah. Hey, sure. hey, let me, let me paint you a picture. What's thinking about? So, take today for example. Early this morning, I was really tired and I didn't want to get up. My mom tried to wake me up a few times, but I kept falling back asleep. I completely forgot that today was the big science fair at school and I had to make the finishing touches on my project this morning. Right before my mom came in, I had this strong feeling it was important that I got up right then. So I got out of bed and began to get ready for school. When I got out of bed, I saw the clock and I had no idea how late it was. If I would have gotten up any later, I would not have been able to finish my project and go to the fair I was so excited for. I could have missed it. Later in the morning, before I left for school, I was eating breakfast with my family at the table, and I was about to leave. For some reason, before I got into the car to leave, I had this thought that I needed to go back to my room, so I did. And I saw on my dresser that I forgot my homework there. So I let out a huge sigh of relief that I remembered my homework, and I went to school. Rough morning, huh? You have no idea, but I'm saving the best for last. On my way home from school, I got a text from my cousin Andy. Andy's one of my best friends, but today he's not. We were supposed to hang out after school, and he canceled on me. Something about a laser tag party he got invited to. Like, I love laser tag. You could have invited me, man. I was going to tell him exactly how I was feeling. And then something inside of me said, Jay, Maybe he don't send that text. And then I realized I didn't have all the information. He didn't mean to hurt my feelings, so I erased it all. Instead, I chose to respond kindly because I knew that was the right thing to do. So, you see what I'm saying, Jeremy? I totally see what you're saying, man. I, I think I know exactly what it is, actually. Really? Tell me about it. Okay, so let me get the facts first. You hear something from the inside, mm -hmm. and then you see things differently than before and feel things that you normally wouldn't? Yeah, bro, that's all correct. Okay, so it seems like you learned a lot and you dodged some trouble by listening too, wouldn't you say so? That's funny, I never realized that before. You're right, it has been really helpful. Bro, that's the Holy Spirit. Oh, wait, what's the Holy Spirit? Okay, not what's the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is God. It's who Jesus sent to be an advocate for you whenever it was his time to leave the earth. Now, God is represented in three forms. God the Father, God the Son, that's Jesus, and then the Holy Spirit. And they all work together and are known as the Trinity. Okay, I, I think I'm getting it. Keep, keep talking, keep talking. Okay. So when you ask Jesus into your heart, the Holy Spirit always comes with him. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our comforter while we're here on earth. You know, man, this is starting to make a whole lot of sense, Jeremy. How'd you learn all this? Bro, just by reading my Bible. 
John 14, 26 tells us all about it. Let me read to you what Jesus said to his disciples. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I've said to you. So, I think I get it now. The Holy Spirit and Jesus work together. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help me in my everyday life? Yes, you got it. Wow, that was incredible. Oh, hold on. Somebody's calling in. Let's see how we can help. Hey, Jeremy and Jay, my name is Sayla, and I just recently gave my heart to the That's Lord. Awesome. I've been praying and reading my Bible. I love it. My parents keep telling me about how they hear from God. I want to hear from God, too. Can you help me out? Hey, thanks for calling in, friend. And we're so proud of you for taking that next step and asking Jesus into your heart. We'll get you an answer. Hey, we're so excited for you. And that's a great question. Jamie and I were actually talking about hearing from God before you called. We were. And the great news is we can all communicate with God. And you're already headed in the right direction. She is? She is. Here, let me break it down for you, wait, okay? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let me grab a piece of paper. All right, we got a little note taker. Here we go. All right, go ahead. Okay, I'm ready. here we go. First, we need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead three days later, and then accept Jesus into your heart. Okay, okay, check, check. All right, second, we need to have a relationship with God. And we do this by reading our Bible, praying, which is just talking with God, and worshiping Him. Okay, check, check, I got it. What's next? Yeah, right, that's, that's about it, Jay. Is that it? Yeah. How can that be so simple? It's supposed to be that simple because God just wants to have a relationship with us. Mm. But I can give you a tip, Jay, oh. if you want to hear it. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Double, triple dog ready? I'm so ready. You ready? Repeat step two over and over and over. Wait, what? When we continually pray, worship, and read our Bible, we get to know God better because we're spending time with him. Okay, follow me here. But imagine if a stranger called you. If it was loud and a lot of things were going on, you probably wouldn't hear their voice over the noise, would you? You're right. Man, I don't think I would notice, but I get it now. You're saying it becomes easier to hear the voice of God when we know what it sounds like. Bro, that's exactly it. You're getting it down. Man, I'm so glad you told me all of this. What else do I need to know the voice of God? What's well, awesome you're asking, because that's what today's episode is all about, and we're gonna talk all about it. Oh man, that's great. I can't wait. Yeah. So what do you think? What are some things you can do to hear the voice of God? Hello, welcome back. Hey, I was just telling Jeremy that I had the craziest thought, and I have to tell you about it. It was so cool. So, I realized I've been hearing the Holy Spirit in a bunch of random situations, like when I'm at school, waking up for school, at the park, or even hanging out with my friends. All these times I've heard his voice, I've just been living life, hanging out, you know, nothing crazy. So tell him what you realized. Oh yeah, God is always with me. He's talking to me all the time. If he's a part of my good days, guess what? He can be a part of my bad days as well. I can talk to him all the time and get advice and help through the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's such a good point. I'm going to have to try that too. <laughs> Literally. So cool, man. It reminds me a lot of our main point. Jesus is with us. So speaking of our main point, do you want to hear a story about how Jesus is with us? Yeah, man, let's do it. Awesome. Let's check it out. After his resurrection for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that dying on the cross and being raised back to life was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. With all of them gathered at the Mount of Olives, he told the disciples to wait and stay in Jerusalem until they would receive a special kind of power, the Holy Spirit, so that they could act as witnesses to the whole world about the great things he did while on earth. 
Then right before their eyes, Jesus was taken up just as He had promised, and a cloud hid Him from their sight. After witnessing Jesus' ascension into heaven, the disciples walked back to Jerusalem and they gathered in an upstairs room where they were staying. While they were patiently waiting for God's gift of the Holy Spirit, they were constantly praying with each other and obeyed Jesus' instruction. It had been 10 days since Jesus had gone back to heaven, and the time of Pentecost came around. The day of Pentecost is an ancient Israelite festival celebrated during early summer where thousands and thousands of Jews had traveled back to Jerusalem from all over the world. It is a time where God's people brought gifts and offerings to God. On that day, the disciples were still together in the house. Then suddenly, they heard a sound from heaven. It sounded like a strong wind blowing, and the room where they were sitting in was filled with it. With the strong wind that came, they also saw fire, which split into tongues of flames hovering over each of their heads. Something amazing had happened. God kept His promise and sent His gift, filling the disciples with the Holy Spirit. God used the image of fire to symbolize His presence with each of them. Back in the Old Testament, God showed up in a similar way at Mount Sinai, where He made a covenant with Moses and Israel, giving them the Ten Commandments. Later, God's glory came in a pillar of fire that filled the temple's tabernacle when He came to live among His people. So now, God's very own presence, His Spirit, had come to live in the new temple of Jesus' body, which is us, His people. As the disciples received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in languages they had not known before, but God gave them the ability to do this. The loud noise caused the Jews visiting Jerusalem to gather and find out what was going on. These Jewish people that came from many different countries and spoke different languages were confused. Each one of them could hear the disciples speaking their very own language. The crowd was really amazed. They asked, aren't all of these people who are speaking Galileans? Then why do we each hear them speaking in our own native language? Many in the crowd wanted to know what was happening and wanted to know what this meant. Some in the crowd made fun of the believers and said they had been drinking too much wine. Then Peter stood up along with the other 11 apostles. In a loud voice, he told the crowd that they were not drunk. It was only nine o'clock in the morning. He began to explain to the crowd that God's promise to send the Holy Spirit had happened that very day on the day of Pentecost. Peter spoke to them about what God had told a prophet named Joel many, many years before this day. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Holy Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. On that very day, the people witnessed God's promise that He made so many years ago come true. God kept His promise and sent the Holy Spirit. Since that time, so many years ago, every person who has believed in the Lord Jesus has received the gift of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. God is always with us. We may not see flames of fire resting on our heads or hear loud wind noises, but we do receive the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to live like Jesus. Wow, that was such a cool story. I can't believe all we've learned today. I totally agree, man. We've learned a lot. I think for me, though, there's probably three things that stuck out the most. What about you? You know, me too. I think I know the three things you're talking about. Okay, take the first one. The first one is I can be a friend of Jesus. Right, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to be a comforter and a friend. God cares so much about us and he wants to be in constant relationship with us. You know, he sent the Holy Spirit to serve as a reminder that he is always with us. I love the second point too, which is I can talk to Jesus. 
He wants to be by our side through the good and the bad. Yeah. He died for us so that we can be in relationship with him. And finally, today's third and final point is that I can live a better life with Jesus on my side. That's right. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit walk with us daily, yeah. comforting us, teaching us, guiding us, and protecting us from all harm. God wants the best for us, and he wants to be our best friend. So don't forget, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to be our friend. The more I get to know Jesus, the easier it will be to hear his voice. And I can live a better life with the Trinity on my side. Bro, you got it. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I really feel like I do. Thanks for all the help today, bud. Anytime, man. So thank you so much for hanging out with us this week on Jesus Is. We'll catch you next time. Wow, that was a great video. It sounds like you learned a lot today, Jay. I learned a whole lot. I had so much fun learning about the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus left his Holy Spirit for us to be our comforter and to be our advocate. And he lives inside of us and he talks to us and he guides us and he shepherds us through all the things of life. And when we're having good days and bad days, the Holy Spirit always speaks to us. And it's just amazing because he wants to be our best friend. And just how Jeremy was saying, the way we receive the Holy Spirit is by being in a relationship with Jesus. And if you haven't asked Jesus to be your best friend, today is the perfect day to do that. That's awesome. There's gonna be a prayer on the screen as soon as this video is over that you can pray with your friends, your family, or anyone else that's around. And this is your very first time praying that prayer. We wanna celebrate you. So please, please, please tell your parents. Now we had such a great time learning with you today. We'll see you next time.